Uh, item 5 on the uh, order paper is the adjournment. The question is the Assembly do now adjourn. And in conjunction with the Business Committee, I have given leave to Mr Gordon Dunn to raise the matter of improvements to the A2 dual carriageway junctions in North Down. The proposer of the topic will have 15 minutes. I call Mr Gordon Dunn. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I very much welcome this opportunity to bring this important matter to the Assembly today, and I would like to thank the Minister for his attendance in the Chamber. I suppose somewhat disappointed he did not accept an invitation to come down to view the road, but it's early days, and maybe after this debate he will come along and spend some time looking at the issues that we raise. The A2 Bangor to Belfast dual carriageway is one of Northern Ireland's busiest roads with up to 45,000 vehicle movements per day over a 24-hour period. As many will know, this road features regularly on the traffic bulletins with traffic tailbacks at Hollywood and Rathgale Road junctions often heard on our airwaves practically every morning, Monday to Friday. There are sections of the dual carriageway from Hollywood to Tillysburn and Bangor to Bally Robert. However, a key section of the road from Marino to Bally, Bally Robert has no central reservation. This is particularly dangerous section of road, with cars turning right into various entranceways and roads with no central turning pockets. There are two very dangerous junctions in particular along the A2 road. These are Kearney Hill and Larch Hill. Indeed, a recent petition with over 50 signatures of people living in the Kearney Hill area demanding action following a recent tragedy when a lady sadly lost her life at this particular section of road earlier this year on what is notorious Ben known as the Devil's Elbow. This junction urgently needs to be made safe for local residents who have expressed their very real concerns and fears at using this junction on a daily basis. A section of adjacent land was acquired some years ago by the then DRD road service. However, nothing was done, and nothing has been done to date to improve this junction. So bad is this junction that the planners will not allow any further approvals that require this exit to be used out onto the A2 dual carriageway. When, what we require is realignment of the junction with a possible tie-in with the traffic lights at Seahill Junction. We need to see investment to make this road safer for all. The Larch Hill Junction is another very dangerous junction which has been adopted by TNI. Again, vehicles entering from the Belfast direction have to stop in the outside lane of the very busy dual carriageway, waiting to, for a gap to cross. This is an extremely dangerous manoeuvre, which again is unfortunately the scene of many accidents which have been far too common over recent years. Drivers exiting Large Hill take their lives in their own hands with a substandard sight line to the right which needs to be improved. Perhaps the A2 roadway could be lowered to improve the sight lines. A small section of the slip lane to the left would improve safety for the vehicles turning left towards Belfast. The Kenninger Junction, which has been in the news recently, is another very dangerous section. And indeed, we witnessed a multi-car accident there involving six vehicles, very recently indeed. Again, vehicles wishing to turn into the Kinniger Road have to sit on the outside lane on the road with restricted approach with no turning pocket, putting motorists at risk coming from behind. The sea, for, the sea Park Road, which leads to a very attractive place for many visitors and residents, particularly in the summer months, with obviously the spectacular coastal path which we have, is another dangerous junction onto the A2 dual carriageway. And indeed, I presented a, a petition to the former Minister Kennedy requesting the installation of traffic lights at that junction. Transport, Transport NI at that time recognised that the sight line to the right is substandard, but nothing again has been done by the department leaving a very dangerous junction onto the carriageway, which I have said earlier has over 45,000 vehicles per day. In relation to ongoing maintenance, there has been a real neglect of this road by the department over recent years. For some time, 
sign maintenance has been totally inadequate. Warning signs for up and coming traffic lights, for example, close to the Folk and Transport Museum, which we are most fortunate to have in our constituency, have been left dirty, unreadable, and obscured by overgrown trees and hedges. Again, in a very extremely dangerous location where it has seen fatal accidents over the years. Signs have been damaged, missing, and not replaced for some time, despite being regularly reported to the TNI section office. The maintenance of this road is a real issue. Grass cutting on the A2 again is an issue of great concern to many residents, and it comes up every year. The target by the department is for five cuts per year, yet large sections have just received their second cut at the end of October. The grass was only cut once during the summer period when the roads were left in a dangerous condition, with the elected representatives having to plead to get sections of grass at dangerous junctions cut, included, including at Palace Barracks, the first entrance into Hollywood, which is extremely busy from the Belfast on the A2. The North Down area rightly prides itself on being a tourist area, attracting many visitors to Bangor, Crawfordsburn, Hollywood, Donoghadee and indeed Malay. We look at other roads, such as A1 Hillsborough, Newry Road, the M1 and the M2. They have all different maintenance contracts, I understand, where the grass is cut and maintained on a regular basis, as we've all witnessed, and I've witnessed this myself over the, the past summer. There are different standards been maintained on some roads compared to the A2. I would therefore urge the Minister to look at the maintenance for the use of a maintenance contract for the A2 Belfast to Bangor Dual Carriageway. I would also bring to your attention a problem we have where a local garage, Bally Robert Car Garage, is loading and unloading vehicles actually on the, the, the carriageway. I am aware of a planning application pending in relation to improving safety at this junction, and I trust the planners will look sympathetically at it when it comes forward. In summary, Minister, we need investment in this section of road. We need to see these junctions upgraded, in particular at Large Hill and Kearney Hill. We need an in-depth study carried out on this road, assessing all risks and measures how to reduce the risks to include all junctions from Valley Robert to Hollywood which are particularly dangerous to those using the road as there is no central reservation. There needs to be a review into how routine maintenance is carried out on the A2 road with consideration to move into a system similar to what is on the A1, the M1 and the M2, given the significant volume of traffic and the real risks that, that exist to those carrying out maintenance work where a buffer type vehicle is now required and in many cases lay enclosures that restrict the flow of traffic. We need investment in proper maintenance of this road with regular grass cutting, weed control, gully emptying and sign maintenance. Long term we need to see progress on the extension of the Sydenham Bypass or the upgrade of the Sydenham Bypass with the need for it to be upgraded to three lanes to relieve the problems of congestion at D Street Bridge. North Down residents deserve better, and I trust that we will again see improvements made. Can I again thank the Minister for his attendance, and I look forward to hearing of progress on the important issues raised. I trust that this matter will be taken seriously indeed. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> can I advise the House all other speakers will now have approximately five minutes, uh, and I call uh, Mr Alan Chambers. Uh, you, speaker. Uh, I want to thank uh, my colleague Gordon Dunn for, for bringing this uh, adjournment debate. Uh, I know that Gordon, along with myself, has had a long time interest uh, in this particular roadway. And also, I would like to place on record my appreciation of the Minister being here this evening to, uh, to listen to the debate. And, uh, over the last few days, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I, I've been sort of checking some statistics and so forth, and I've came across um, a record of a Hansard debate. Um, that took place in, in this chamber in 2002, and the topic was the A2. Uh, and there was a certain Mr. Peter Robinson was the Minister for Regional Development at that particular time. Now, the theme running through that debate 
as I read it, was the sad and the unacceptable loss of life that was occurring on the A2 on a regular basis. Now, that loss of life is still a feature of this road. And this became more than just a paragraph in the local paper for me when a very dear friend, Norma Diffley, a long-time resident of Groomsport, fell victim in a collision that involved another vehicle allegedly crossing the carriageway at the Devil's Elbow in early January this year. Mr David Calder, would, a gentleman I was aware of, had his life taken from him as he rode his bicycle on the A2 near Coltra in July. As Gordon has said, parts of the A2 from Bangor to Hollywood are dual carriageway and they do provide a degree of protection from crossover collisions. This stretch stops at Belly Robert. The other portion of separated traffic flow is the stretch in the Hollywood from Sea Park. It is not coincidental, uh, Deputy Speaker, that the two fatalities this year were on that three or four mile stretch of unseparated carriageway. Now, up to 45,000 vehicles a day pass each other, traveling in the different directions. They pass each other within a few feet, and they're traveling at up to 50 miles an hour, or a closing speed of 100 miles an hour. One moment of inattention or a tire blowing out or something like that affords no hiding place from a horrendous collision. The reality is that the stretch of the A2 from Belly Robert to Sea Park really isn't fit for purpose if you genuinely value the safety of the lives of road users. If you were planning this road at the moment and you had it on the drawing board, it wouldn't get off the drawing board because it wouldn't meet any of the best practice. Traffic separation is essential to make this a safer route. If it means vesting parts of people's gardens, will we as elected members support that? So, I mean, we can't ask the minister to do certain things if we're not prepared in the long term to support them. Now, right turners do present a challenge, and I think that we need to encourage uh, people using the road who are going to make right turns. We've got to advise them to uh, advertise their intentions as early as possible that they are going to turn right, uh, because this manoeuvre, turning right, does bring with it the danger of a high-speed rear shunt. At a recent question time, the minister answered a question about the A2. He said that a survey carried out in 2011 he identified two junctions that needed improvement, Belly Robert Road and Bella Money Road. Five years on, uh, the statutory process is still to begin, I believe. Funding has to be secured and priority confirmed. So I sympathise with the Minister in finding uh, the funding for these things, because funding is already late in North Down for, for even fixing potholes. So anyone with an interest in road safety uh, and who has any budgetary influence uh, with the executive really does need to help the minister to secure uh, this funding. In re relation to cycling, uh, we have a policy to encourage cycling, and I admire those hardy souls who use this road on two wheels. I also fear for them. The current arrangements, or should I say no arrangements, is not an acceptable situation. Painting a cycle lane will not cut it. Physical separation is required for cyclists as well. Now, I have to pay compliment that over the years, things have been done to make the road safer. We'll have to acknowledge that more traffic lights, the average speed cameras, they have made a big difference. A lot of people question whether they actually work or not, but they have slowed up the speed on that particular road. So really, in conclusion, I'd ask the minister to maybe give a bit more consideration to the Craig Antlet roundabout to maybe get some more traffic off the A2 uh, and ease the sheer volume of traffic using that every day. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Thank you very much. I call Dr. Stephen Farry. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Deputy Speaker. Can I also thank um, Gordon Dunn for bringing uh, this important uh, German debate uh, before uh, the Assembly? And at, at the outset, to recognise that there are uh, no easy answers um, to the problems that we are setting out here today. But if, uh, at the very least, we can acknowledge, and in particular, the Minister can acknowledge that the, the status quo 
in relation to the A2 is simply uh, not sustainable and that the creative minds, including the suggestions that come from MLAs uh, today and elsewhere, do need to be uh, corralled uh, and uh, some further remedies building upon what uh, Alan Chambers has said uh, be, be taken forward uh, as soon as possible. And I also appreciate that there are constraints in terms, in terms of resources. In essence, what we have is a, a major road, uh, which is now one of the major roads uh, in, in Northern Ireland in terms of the volume of traffic, and it probably uh, rivals the A1 in terms of the volume of traffic in, in terms of the record outside the context of the motorways and the Westlink. So the, the, the importance of what we're talking about here is, is, is massive, and it's, it's simply something that we can't ignore. But clearly, we have a situation where um, a, a road has developed in terms of the volume of traffic uh, without uh, um, further or sufficient recognition taking place of the character of the area around it and the fact that it is a residential area. And to take things to an extreme level, we have a situation where what is a major commuter route with a huge volume of traffic, we have people who are actually uh, making manoeuvres in and out of, of driveways at the back on to portions of, of the road, never mind the, the actual road junctions um, th them, themselves. In essence, there are probably two uh, competing um, re requirements here. Uh, one is that of how we best um, combat congestion, which is probably a debate uh, for another day. Um, but the, the, the paramount interest has to be that, to be that of, the, of the road safety, um, where the situation is uh, getting critical. And while I appreciate that major accidents can come and, and go in, in waves and, and in groups, we have had a clear uptick uh, this year. And the, the risks and dangers there are, are very clear for all of us to see, in particular those of us who would use the road on an ongoing basis. I do think we are going to have to consider um, the provision of some um, dedicated right-hand turn uh, facilities at certain points al along the road. It may even be that we have to make it illegal to make right-hand turns at certain places and request that people, as happens in other situations, go down to a safer junction and then double back in terms of them making what will become, in due course, a, a left-hand turn. Um, reference has been made as well to some of the, of the, of the real um, difficult junctions, in particular um, between uh, Bally Robert and Hollywood. I do want to also add to that concerns about the, the entrance into the Kinnaker area, uh, which is, uh, in theory, uh, blocked off in terms of, of safety barriers, which maybe gives it the air of being a dual carriageway, but it is nonetheless a very difficult junction, uh, often where cars are coming around at, at speed in what is officially a 40 mile an hour zone, but uh, as we know, the speed limits aren't always uh, obeyed and uh, cars can be very quickly confronted with a car sitting uh, to make, waiting to make a right hand turn into the Kinnaker. Uh, that junction is, is difficult enough as things currently stand but as the, the, the Minister will be well aware uh, with yesterday's announcement uh, that the M MOD uh, intends to sell off uh, some property there is now the potential for the Kinnaker um, base uh, to be sold off and the likelihood will be that will be used for housing which will further place greater pressure pressure on that uh, particular area. It would be also useful if the Minister could also clarify the point that was made by uh, Gordon Dunn in, in, in relation to the, the garage at, um, at Bally Robert, the, the, car, the car showroom. And uh, while I do uh, concur with him about the, the potential planning application resolving uh, the issue, if, if the Minister could maybe clarify what is the legal situation at present in terms of uh, cars being loaded and offloaded at that particular point, given uh, that elsewhere there would, there would be indications of a blockage on, on the road if roadworks, for example, uh, were taking, taking place. It's also worth just briefly putting on record as well that um, the A2 can't be seen in, in isolation. There's also issues in relation to the Sydney Bypass, which does need the, the third lane added, uh, and then right through to, to D Street, which is a problem. Uh, and also then looking back in terms of the Rathgill Road in Bangor, which perhaps doesn't have the same degree of road safety accidents as the A2 itself, but it is essentially a C-class rural road that has developed in terms over years of no, the number of traffic using it and more and more housing development. Are, are, are backing on to it, including the, the, the current Helen's Wood proposal. Ask Again, that's a situation that's remarks. not going to be sustainable. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Thank you. I call Mr. Alex Eason. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, I would congratulate my colleague for secure, securing this adjournment debate today. Um, I recognise that the A2 is the busiest road we have in North Down and perhaps one of the busiest in Northern Ireland and has a, a bad history in, in the past for accidents and in recent times as well. I do feel with the introduction of the speed enforcement camera system, 
series of cameras on the A2 dual carriageway between Bangor and Belfast have been important weapons in fighting against uh, speeding drivers and help to reduce uh, some of the accidents. Rather than flashing drivers who are speeding at a fixed point, the system monitors the rate of every car over a certain distance, has helped reduce the incidents on the A2. However, we are only too aware that in recent times there have been several fatalities with a 75-year-old woman, which has been mentioned, and also uh, uh, following a, a two-vehicle crash, and also a cyclist who was aged in his 60s who died after being hit, hit by a car. The A2 Belfast to Bangor carries approximately 45,000 vehicles a day with many junctions, and I am aware that the road service has longer term plans, including proposals to widen the busiest section of that route, the Sydney Bypass, to three lanes in each direction to improve capacity and reduce delays at peak times. I also understand that some junctions on the A2 between Hollywood and Bally Robert, that road service have long term plans to improve a number of the junctions along that section to improve road safety. Um, some of the junctions have been mentioned in, as um, Mr. Farry has mentioned uh, if they go ahead for new houses at Kinnegar goes ahead, there's going to have to be a, a major overhaul to see how the A2 can cope with the huge amount of houses that would be built on such a big site. Um, we've also mentioned about Bally Roberts where there's a uh, car business which are planning to extend uh, and they need to make sure that uh, the proper facilities are in place at that junction to cope with that as well. Um, road services have identified a potential improvement also on the Carney Hill Junction to provide a right turn pocket from Belfast direction to reduce the risk of rear end um, shunts. However, this scheme seems to be unlikely uh, Minister, to proceed in the foreseeable future due to the limited availability of funding. And maybe you could give us an update on that. If, if you don't know, maybe come back to us on it. I do feel that more can be done to make the A2 in general safer for drivers. I believe that a central reservation barrier should be erected uh, at particularly the, the Devil's Elbow. This bend is severe and there have been many accidents at this point. Um, I also believe that um, there are problems with uh, maintenance issues such as the problem of getting the grass cut, cut which is causing a hindrance for drivers and also hedges, as my colleague mentioned, which are blocking sign, signage, and I believe that needs to be looked at. Um, Mr. Deputy Speaker, one death is too many on our roads, and if anything further can be done on the A2 that helps with safety uh, and saves a life, uh, I would urge the Minister to take what steps he can to do that. Thank you. Thank you. I call uh, Mr. Stephen Agnew. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I'll, I'll start with thanking the proposer for bringing this issue forward and, and um, for bringing the Minister here today and indeed thanking the Minister for his presence. I won't repeat everything that's been said. The point has been well made. This is a busy road. This is a dangerous road. And we would like to hear from the Minister what can be done to improve the safety on the road. I suppose the first issue I dealt with was when actually in looking at parking issues with Sea Park residents um, and the exiting onto the road uh, was raised by a number of residents. Um, since then, as others have said, uh, the, the junctions at Kearney Hill and Larch Hill have, have been brought to my attention. I think Alan Chambers made a good point when he said if we were building this road today, we wouldn't pass it. You know, this, this current setup wouldn't be passed. It wouldn't pass current standards. And I, I, would, I would back his point about the need to have separation for cyclists. Um, and it's already been alluded to, the, the, the recent death of a cyclist on the road. This is a road that runs between our capital city and our largest town. It is busy, um, and it should be an infrastructure uh, priority. Safety should uh, be a priority over speed. So I, I would ask the Minister to, to see what assessment can be done of the existing junctions on the road and, where possible, what physical measures can be put in place um, to mitigate against the dangers that currently exist. I, I would ask him also to look at the, the, the speed limits in the road. Anybody who drives it regularly knows it goes 60, 50, 40, 30, 40, 50, 60. And I do think that the message that a lot of people get is it's a 60 mile an hour road um, and, and drive that or close to that for, for most of the stretch. And it's certainly not appropriate in all places. And um, Mr. Eason referred 
to the, to the speed cameras that they have made a help in that regard. But it is treated like a, a dual carriageway, and many do seem to drive 60 almost across the full length of it. Um, so I, I, I would ask the Minister to look at the speed limits and, as I say, to see what physical measures can be put in place to mitigate against the dangers, um, because we can't continually come back to the Assembly. As was mentioned, others were here in 2002 to say there's been too many road deaths. Um, there are too many road deaths, Minister, and if you can help, we would greatly appreciate your help. Thank you. I call uh, Mr Justin McNulty. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'd, I'd also like to thank the member for bringing this motion forward, and I'd like to acknowledge the presence of the Minister for this debate. I rise today to speak to this adjournment debate on behalf of the SDLP. I also do so as a member of the Committee for Infrastructure. The A2 dual carriageway is the main corridor from Bangor to Belfast, which goes through Hollywood and Cotra, and is the main route towards tourist attractions, including the Ulster Folk and Heritage Museum, or Ulster Folk and Transport Museum, Helens Bay and Crawfordsburn. The A2 Belfast Bangor Road is part of the strategic road network and carries about 45,000 vehicles daily. Rarely does a morning go by when we don't hear of the delays or even an accident on this road, and sadly, this year we have heard of very serious road accidents. As mentioned a number of times already, in January a 75-year-old lady lost her life following a fatal car accident. In July of this year, another death occurred, this time a cyclist who was travelling towards Bangor in the early hours of the morning. It is sad to see two deaths happening on the same stretch of this road over such a short period of time. Without further safety improvements, we run the risk of further accidents and deaths on, the, on this carriageway. This motion mentions the junctions of this road in parts. This road has many twists and turns, which makes pulling out of or into those junctions much more perilous. The A2 dual carriageway has had average speed cameras introduced a number of years ago, as mentioned already, which has helped to reduce risk for motors by encouraging reduced speeds. However, as, there, as has already been mentioned as well, there, are, there remains a number of dangerous junctions that need improved, and we support Mr Dunn's calls for road safety improvement on this road. However, Mr. Speaker, I must, Mr. Speaker, I must, or Mr. Deputy Speaker, I must highlight the SDLP's wider concerns about road safety. There are many roads across the north that require road safety upgrades. Every death on our roads is one too many, and I believe that the Minister for Infrastructure must take road safety, make, must make road safety a, high, a highest priority, and ensure that all our roads are safe to travel on. In conclusion, Mr Speaker, we welcome the opportunity to contribute to today's adjournment debate and we put our support behind Mr Dunn's proposals for improvements in relation to the safety of this road. Thank you. Thank you. I call uh, the Minister for Infrastructure, Mr Chris Hazard, and <coughs> Minister, you will have up to 10 minutes. Uh, Deputy Speaker, thanks very much uh, indeed. And uh, congratulate and thank the member for, for raising this issue here uh, to talk about. And perhaps just at the outset, I'll, I'll touch upon a few of the remarks uh, just in case that I, I don't get time to, to get to them to the end. And certainly I'll be more than happy to review Hansard if I do to miss any and to come back with officials. But just certainly perhaps to, to start with um, just McNulty's point at the start, and road safety is absolutely a priority of mine. You know, when we see every couple of weeks when I see the statistics coming into my office about fatalities and serious accidents, you know, it's personal to me. Um, I had a younger brother who once went out at night time and never came home who was killed in a road accident, so very much road safety is absolutely a priority for me, and it is, has been for my department and for previous ministers, so absolutely be assured that road safety and whatever we can do, we will do. Um, I suppose Alan Chambers talked a little bit about the Creek Antlet Roundabout, and there is a, there's a particular point in case that you know, there are competing priorities in the North Down region. Uh, that the division certainly are looking at. So, you know, to take money from one to put the other, there's going to be things to suffer and lose out in that. But very much the A2 and the need to upgrade safety will very much be on the horizon. Um, Mr. Chambers and also Stephen Agnew mentioned the importance of segregated cycling lanes. And I think certainly in the North Down area, and especially that corridor between Belfast and Bangor, that's something that working with the local council, I, I'll be looking to do. And I, I publish my Greenway strategy tomorrow. I'm very much part of that. Uh, is different schemes in that particular part of the world that, that I think uh, will go some way to even that, alleviating that problem, because more can be done in, in that regard. Um, Stephen Agnew and Stephen Farry also touched upon 
speeding and, and driving practice. And it's important to stress here too that you know very much that's an issue for the PSNI, uh, and there, there could be engagement with the PSNI if you're saying people are there's, there's habits of speeding in that particular corridor. If there's drivers' practices isn't what it should be, then certainly that's something that, that should be addressed, because it is important to remember and. It's no way in a reflection upon those who did sadly lose their lives in, in this particular thing, but you know, we know that fatalities and serious road accidents, 95% or more, are caused by the driver and the driver's practice, uh, and the, the, a mistake or whatever made by the driver has nothing to do with the road itself or how a road is engineered, um, so we should bear that in mind also. The issue of the Bolly Robert garage, more than happy to pick that up with officials afterwards. Um, I'm not aware of anything that's been done to, to date on that particular one. And, and with regards to the development and whenever you're bringing more houses in, and there's been reference to MOD plans, etc., around Kinnegar, you know, we, we know when it happens in other places that you know, planning conditions can be put in place to say if there's going to be a huge increase in houses, then maybe there needs to be improvements to the road as well. So that is something we'd be more than happy to look at going forward. And as I say, if I have missed anything out there, I'm more than happy to, to review Hansard. And if any member does want to uh, correspond with myself to, to raise anything, certainly uh, feel free. Um, as Minister for Infrastructure, I am very aware of the strategic importance of the A2 Belfast to Bangor Road. Uh, the road carries, as has been mentioned previously, an excess of 45,000 vehicles per day and upwards of 5,000 vehicles per hour at peak times. It is obviously a very busy road and one of our key roads on the trunk, trunk road network. Um, I would like to clarify that I have taken this debate to concentrate on the stretch of the A2 within the North Down constituency between Tillysburn and the Bangor Ring Road, uh, a stretch of just over eight miles. The road has four lanes, as has been pointed out, along most of its eight miles, and a proportion of this is dual carriageway. Travelling from west to east from the junction with the A55 outer ring at Tillysburn, the road is a three-lane dual carriageway to the Hollywood Exchange grade-separated junction. After this, the road is a two-lane dual carriageway continuing past Hollywood before reducing to a single carriageway with four lanes to the east of Hollywood at the junction with Winnie Hill. The character of the route changes from here with the presence of a number of private accesses and a series of signal control junctions. This continues to Bally Robert, where there is a second length of dual carriageway, which continues the grade separated junction with the West Circular Road at Bangor, which is also known as the Bangor Ring Road. And I appreciate most people in here probably know that better than I do. Uh, the speed limit varies along the road. The national speed limit applies to the two mile stretch of dual carriageway between Tillysburn and Hollywood. There is a 40 mile an hour speed limit between Hollywood and Coltra. This one mile stretch has a plethora of accesses with seven junctions five of which are signalised, and there is also a pedestrian control crossing close to Sea Park Road. The next section between Coltra and Bally Robert is three miles long, with a 50 mile an hour speed limit. There are 11 junctions, four of which are signalised. The final stretch is the two mile long dual carriageway from Bally Robert to Bangor, where the national speed limit applies. With such a large number of junctions and traffic signals in a relatively confined stretch of road, it is obvious that the balance of safety and traffic progression is a difficult one to accomplish, but it is a balance that my department's transport and I works to achieve on a daily basis. There are average speed cameras along the entire length of the road, and these bright yellow structures serve to make motorists aware of their presence. And I think it's pleasing to say that they have had such uh, an effect in the North Down area. Having said that, it remains a very busy, intricate route which demands full attention from those making their way, especially at peak times. Regarding safety, um, you know, I'm sure we all recognise the collisions that have occurred on this road, including the two tragic fatalities which happened this year. There are investigations ongoing, and it would not be appropriate for me to comment further at this time. However, I can assure, as I did at the outset, those families affected that my traffic engineers will engage fully with the PSNI to consider if there are any viable measures which could be introduced to avoid collisions of a similar nature in the future. Road safety will always be a priority for this department. Over the past three years, there have been 85 collisions recorded at the 25 road junctions along this route. From the information received from the PSNI, the vast majority of collisions result in injuries which are classified as slight, and the cause of these collisions fall into three main groups. 30 driving too close, 17 drivers' attention being diverted, 24 drivers not taking care, merging onto the road or crossing, turning, changing lane on the road. Member, members will be aware of the many measures my department has taken to educate road users within the attention of reducing collisions and injuries on our roads. The statistics serve to reinforce the message 
from the Sure the Road to Zero initiative and the importance, the responsibility that drivers have to take care for themselves and for others on the road. That's the message I would like to reiterate today as we move into the winter season with darker days and inclement weather affecting visibility. Driving conditions will be more difficult, so extra caution will be required by everybody using our roads. Members will be aware of the many measures that have been introduced to improve safety along the A2, including the three grade separated junctions at Hollywood Exchange, the Folk and Transport Museum, and at the junction with the Bangor Ring Road. We have also installed signals to control the traffic at 12 of the 25 larger junctions to improve safety and traffic progression. There are a large number of coloured high friction surfacing zones, which also serve to highlight the proximity of junctions and to improve safety. These measures, along with the speed limits and a wide-ranging programme of traffic signs and road markings, are all along the route. They serve to enhance and improve the safety of the A2 along its entire length. There is also a comprehensive programme of inspection and maintenance to ensure that road surface is maintained to a high standard. My department's traffic control centre also plays an important role in monitoring the road from a safety and traffic progression perspective. The control centre is generally operational Monday to Saturday and also operates on Sundays as required to handle traffic disruption in response to planned roadworks, events or anticipated increased traffic flows such as the run-up to Christmas. Staff at the control centre monitor a number of CCTV cameras along the A2 between Belfast and Bangor and use this information to continuously update traffic signal timings at the junctions along the route based on actual traffic flows. This live, up-to-the-minute programming of signal timings ensures the road operates at its maximum efficiency. The control centre also provides live traffic information via the Traffic Watch NI website and on social media such as Twitter so road users can be informed of the decisions and plan their journeys more effectively. I think it's also important that we touch upon the wider transport issues. Uh, so regarding the railway, I can also advise members that numbers of passengers using the train service between Bangor and Belfast has increased significantly, especially at peak hours, with an increase of some 20% in passenger journeys over the past five years alone. This reflects the growing importance of a rail infrastructure serving commuters in this part of the world and shows that actually sometimes when we go to improve the road, improve road safety, sometimes the answer is actually off the road and it's on different modes of transport. Uh, and it's something certainly between Bangor and Belfast I think we can do more in. Uh, I think there's an appetite certainly in North Down for various different types of transport and I think the answers to some of these problems may actually lie there. Um, I recognise there are a number of junctions where public representatives have raised their concerns about traffic progression and also collisions. We receive many requests and I can advise there is a process in place <coughs> whereby engineering staff review collisions with the PSNI with a view to identifying any common causes which could be addressed by, en to conclude. by engineering measures. I can also add that my department has long-term plans to improve a number of the junctions along this route to improve road safety. A route study was carried out on the A2 in 2011 and a number of junction improvements were identified. Two particular schemes of Ballyarbert Road and Ballymoney Road have been taken forward to detailed design. Order. The Minister's time is up, unfortunately. Um, the Assembly is adjourned.